Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the ninth and the final SAP Admitted Student Panel of the Year. Uh, we are talking about clubs, organizations, and socializing at Boston College. Really the thing that everyone's worried about. Uh, no one worries about school. Everyone comes to college and they're like, oh yeah, 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 nuclear physics, I got it. Oh yeah, 15 term page term paper, got it. But how am I going to make friends? And how am I going to meet people? And how am I going to find people that are I, I share interests and passions with? How am I going to find people to be on my intramural volleyball team? Everyone's worried about making social connections, uh, which I understand is very important. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Um, at some places, and that's why I came up with the title that I did, at some places, uh, Greek life is what na helps you navigate through. Uh, that's not a factor here at Boston College. Uh, so we're going to talk about, about how students make friends, how they meet people, uh, what are the clubs and organizations that are available, how people join them, uh, how they extend their social network, and how they have fun at Boston College. So I'm going to moderate this discussion. My name is Chris O'Brien, uh, and I have a couple of panelists with me. I have another one that will be joining us in a second. And uh, I'm going to have them introduce themselves. And I've already kind of come up with a few questions that maybe we'll get to the heart of what it is that we want to get to tonight. Um, but I'll also have a chance to, you know, get some questions from you guys if you use the Q&A, if there are certain things that you want our group to talk about. Uh, we are getting towards the end. May 1st is Saturday. So for some of you that this kind of program is critical for you to understand the community and the culture here, we're going to try to get to the heart of it. If you've already made a decision, uh, maybe we're going to talk about things that you can't wait to participate in. You can't wait to be a part of. Get excited about what's in store for you for the next four years. That works for us too. So let's do a quick introduction, all right? So um, let's start with, I like to go in alphabetical order, but let's go in alphabetical order of last name, which would put Brie first. And Brie, here's what we wanna know, who you are and where you're from and what you study, what year you are, even though that's kind of clear from the camera box. Uh, but if you could tell us a little bit about your resume, what are the clubs and organizations that you're part of here at Boston College? And then, and then Brian and Julia, you can do the same. Uh, but Brie, why don't you get us started? Sure. Hi guys, welcome. My name is Brie, like Chris said. I am a junior. I am majoring in political science in the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences. And then I'm minoring in marketing in the Carroll School of um, Management. And I am from Westport, Connecticut. Um, some of my favorite clubs I've participated in at BC so far is Ascend, which it was a, or is a mentorship program for all women. And then there's one for all men uh, called Freshman League. And you have a small group. There are about, I'd say eight freshmen and then two upperclassmen mentors. And you meet for an hour and a half a week and you just talk about anything from what it means to be a woman on BC's campus, to being a woman in general, um, to roommate problems and vocational discernment. Um, it's a really nice space to really reflect and come together with people that you've never seen before. Um, yeah, that's one of the clubs. I won't take too long, but I'm, should I say like all of them that I've been a part of? I don't know. <laughs> Well, you could have you could have bragged and talked to like talked the whole hour and talked about all these clubs. But the the one that seems to mean a lot to you, that's a good place to start. So, Bri, yeah. that was perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, why don't we Why don't we move to uh, to Julia? Absolutely. Hi, guys. My my name is Julia Freyone. I am from Northeastern Massachusetts and I'm a junior uh, here at BC, as you can see in my name. Um, but I am a communication major um, in the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences. And I'm an applied psychology minor in the Lynch School of Education and Human Development. And like Brie, I was actually also an Ascend, um, which I really enjoyed as well. But one club that I would love to tell you guys about um, is Model UN here at Boston College, which I have been a part of for several years. So I have participated participated both on the side where I represent a country or a person and go debate their opinion on a certain topic. And I've also gotten to participate in planning a conference for current high school students. It's such a fun experience. We've actually been all virtual this year, obviously, but we've still gotten to engage with those conferences. And it's also a really great way to meet upperclassmen um, when you're a freshman or a sophomore, because the upperclassmen are so enthusiastic and excited to get to know the underclassmen. So it was the perfect club for me to join. Perfect. Okay. Brian, 
You're next. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us tonight. My name is Brian Gardner. I am a sophomore from Foxborough, Massachusetts, and I am currently studying finance and business analytics in our Carroll School of Management. And I also have a major in psychology in our Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences. Um, and I did freshman league, which was the um, equivalent to ascend for male identifying students. I have an on-campus job with athletics. I do a bunch of intramurals. Hope they get to talk more about that as we move forward. Um, but the one I'll choose to elaborate on is the CLC. The CLC on campus is our Christian life community, um, and it's mainly for students who are practicing um, any of the, the faith denominations below Christianity. Um, I joined it immediately when I got here my freshman year, and I made some of my best friends there. Uh, similar to the Ascend group that Bree was mentioning, it's in many ways a mentorship group with our underclassmen with older students who lead meetings. But I, what I found was it was a, a great place for reflection for about an hour every single week. And you have those dedicated meetings where you get to meet some of your peers with like-minded uh, maybe backgrounds or traditions or practices. Um, and you just kind of have a chance to talk about something a little bit more deeply uh, than you might in your day-to-day -day life in the dining halls or talking about sports or doing whatever you may do with your roommates. I, I found it's very intentional space and something a little bit uh, change of pace to go through in your day. Um, so especially for underclassmen, I would certainly recommend it, but I've continued to do it into this year and I'll continue doing it in the next years. And it's certainly worthwhile use of your time to join the CLC. Fantastic, thanks, Brian. Uh, last but not least, uh, Gianna, you're, you're, you're last, but not least, like I said. Um, we're introducing ourselves, who we are, where we're from, what we study, what year we are. All of it is kind of in front of us. But if you could talk about sort of a, a club, a club on your resume that means a lot to you uh, to finish off your, your introduction. Sure, so hi everyone, my name is Gianna Rusi. I am a junior in the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences, rising senior now, hard to believe I'm saying that. Um, and I'm double majoring in political science and history. Um, and I'm originally, oops, my Siri went off. I'm originally from Miami, Florida. Um, so very different weather I'm used to, but um, I've loved the winter seasons here and something I'm really proud of um, to be a part of since my sophomore year is the undergraduate government of Boston College. Um, I've met some amazing people through that, people that are really passionate about making a change on campus and beyond. So I've just been able to make some friends for life since I've joined. Um, I've been part of the communications division and then now I'm part of the student assembly and I'm going to be vice president next year for the upcoming term. So it's really been such an integral part of my life. It's allowed me to grow um, and gain firsthand knowledge in a field I want to go into. And it's also helped me make friends for life. So I can't complain about that. <laughs> well, thank you, Madam Vice President for fitting us into your time. We really appreciate that. Um, so let's start with like, you know, Bree, talk about like the difference between high school clubs and organizations and clubs in college. Is there a difference? Are they better or are they just different? I think the main difference that comes to mind is the conversations that you'll have with all the varying clubs that you'll be part of. Um, one word that I really like that Brian said was the intentionalness of each space that you're going to be in. Um, everyone wants to really make the most of their time at college. You know, you come in as a freshman, super excited and that excitement only grows throughout. Um, and with the lack of Greek life, um, I think that provides a space where everyone really wants to find people not right on their hallways or in their major classes. So you are really seeking these friendships that are authentic and um, more, not more, but going to be very valuable throughout your entire college experience. Julia, someone already asked a good question uh, in the, uh, the Q&A about reaching out to clubs while you're not there yet. It, would you, you know, would you do that? If someone on this call is interested in the Model UN, if someone's interested in uh, any of these mentorship groups, someone's interested in student government, I mean, were you the type of student that would have reached out? And now that you're a BC student, like, would you think that was pretty cool if you're a member of this organization, a leadership member of the organization, and you have an incoming first year student reaching out to you? I'm going to say that I would have been the type of student to do that. Although yeah, I did not do it before coming to BC. So I would encourage you to do that because on the leadership side, on our side of things, I would be so excited to get an email from an incoming freshman um, talking about 
about a club they're curious about joining. Actually, a great example of this is my brother is actually joining the class of 2025 um, and he's very interested in acapella. So I've already been encouraging him to reach out to the presidents of the acapella clubs and put his name out there. And I would encourage all of you to do the same. We would be thrilled to hear from any of you who are interested in joining our club. So definitely, if you're interested in something, I would encourage reaching out and asking questions about it, seeing if it's a club you really want to be a part of. So Brian, like when you join CLC or, or all of you are part of the student admissions program, the best club on campus, the admissions volunteers, um, like how do you find out about these things? Uh, I mean, did you get to campus and an upperclassman told you, did you get to campus and there's, there's advertisement or, you know, are there events on the, on the, your RA puts on or campus wide that you can find out about organizations and clubs? Cause again, you found out about things that maybe you didn't come to college directly knowing that that's what you were going to do with your time and energy and talents. That's a great question, Chris. Um, I found personally, I was in that, that position you're just outlining where I knew I wanted to be involved, but I really had no clue what I wanted to be involved with. Um, I think what I found to be the most helpful resource was the student involvement fair. Um, the first week of every single semester, there's an involvement fair and the big one is our fall student involvement fair where all 300 organizations on BC's campus will have some sort of table. They'll be throwing Frisbees at you and candy and t-shirts and trying to get your attention. And that takes place on our Stokes quad, uh, one of our main academic quads. Um, but I remember just walking up and down the aisles of tables thinking, oh, that might be interesting. Ooh, an acapella group, I'll put my name down for that, even though I can't sing. Like I signed up for dozens of different clubs and I'm still getting emails from the cooking club and the board game society and all sorts of different things. So certainly if you're someone who wants to get involved, but you're not too sure what you want to get involved with, that's a great option for you. I took full advantage of it. And I'd recommend you do the same. Um, what I would also say too is on that last question, I know they were asking a little bit about how to like maybe get in touch with clubs. And certainly that, that could be a problem for a first year student as well, wanting to join a club and not knowing how to get their email on a list or get involved. Um, and what I would say is not only does BC have a website where you can find all the clubs and find contact information for the clubs, and I can find that in just a second and link it in the chat, um, but you can also probably find some social media for every club. So the acapella groups Julia mentioned, or the, the UN or the CLC, they all have Instagrams and um, social media of some sort that you can certainly DM or reach out to and get in contact with that way. And Deanna, like some of the bigger clubs like UGBC, the undergraduate governor of Boston College, uh, there are several steps in offices and elections and, and nominations. Because uh, someone asked again in the Q&A about applications for clubs. Uh, can, you, can you talk about how that organization works, especially as people want to get involved and maybe generally with other organizations that you know about? What are the things that are easy to join? What are the things that require a little bit of experience and a little bit more of, of like an application? Sure. So um, we our schedule shifted this year because COVID kind of moved things back a little bit. We usually start in um, the spring, but um, so now we're starting to take applications, but we obviously have space for the incoming class and for freshmen that really want to get involved. So I would definitely take advantage of the fair that Brian mentioned earlier because UGBC does have a presence there and we kind of go through step by step what you are most interested in and kind of explain the different divisions to you. Um, also, if you have any questions about that, feel free to reach out to me and I can go step by step uh, with it through you. I'd be happy to do that. Um, but yeah, we, we do things from programming to advocacy work and um, you know, the student assembly is mostly election based. So that's something you can definitely run for once you get on campus, actually, for your class. Um, I would definitely recommend doing that. I was not, um, I was not one of the people who did that my freshman year, but I definitely uh, would encourage you to, you know, put yourself out there, like Julia mentioned earlier, and definitely try these things out. Um, and then also there's a lot of application based things. So, you know, if you're interested in communications, you can definitely do communications for undergraduate government. You can fulfill a programming role if you're really interested in that. Um, there's different ways to be an advocate for other students. And that's something I learned through UTBC. So there's definitely a place for you. Um, and like um, Chris mentioned too, there's different clubs. And I highly recommend going to that fair because you'll be able to get tremendous insight on what the different clubs here do. And even if it's something you weren't involved in in high school, like I was never involved in my student government in high school, definitely take the opportunity to get involved in things you would have never thought you would be involved in because it'll make all the difference. Well, now Gianna and, and Julia have talked about things that they didn't do that they wish they had, which brings up a good point. Like we're talking about getting involved. Is there any, 
you know, is, is there any uh, wisdom in, in waiting and maybe not putting too much on your plate? And maybe you have friends that did it. Maybe you guys did it. Like, Brie, you're shaking your head. Like, Brie, like, is there some wisdom in taking it slow uh, in your first year? Maybe not like Brian sign up for 65 organizations that he neglects 61 of uh, these days. Um, is there some, is, is it good to maybe feel your way around and take some time and, and maybe build up to something a little bit later? Yeah, I am nodding my head vigorously because I did what Brian did. I went to the involvement fair and I think I put my name on maybe every single list that I walked past. I made eye contact with the club member and I couldn't say no. So I definitely recommend um, just looking up, researching the clubs that you are actually interested in beforehand and actually going to those and then talking to them rather than saying, yes, I want to sign up for a medlife club when I am a humanities major and have no interest in going into the medical field. Um, that way you aren't bombarded with clubs. And then I also went to all of these different clubs, meetings in the beginning, informational meetings, and got overwhelmed by the amount of clubs that I wanted to join and then didn't get too involved with any my first semester. So I was a little overwhelmed by the options and I definitely recommend researching first and then taking it from there. And Bree certainly gives good advice there that you should look into the clubs before you join them. But I do also think it's important to say that there is such thing as being too cautious before joining clubs. Um, I know a lot of people kind of want to dip their toe into the water, but I think, um, I mean, Chris was making fun of me for it, but I think there's also a very kind of good approach to just joining a bunch of different clubs, especially if you're someone like I was that didn't know what you wanted to do, even after seeing all the possible options. And I think, especially as a first year student, there's an expectation that you'll be doing a lot of different things at a surface level before really finding out what you love and then diving deeper into that. So I know there's really, if you're not sure, like I wasn't, I think there's nothing wrong with joining, you know, a dozen clubs, going to the informational meetings and saying, okay, well, maybe that one's not for me, but I'm glad I at least know that now versus maybe saying, I don't know what's for me. So I'm going to wait until second semester. And by that point, you might feel behind or you might've felt you could have made more friends if you joined more things. But I think it's definitely on a case by case basis and there's multiple ways to go about it, but don't be afraid to dive head first if it's something you think might be best for you specifically. Oh, Brian, I mean, I was I was having a little bit of fun at your expense just because we're sitting here with the vice president of next year's uh, student body who wasn't in student who wasn't in student government as a as a high school student or a freshman. So, you know, she obviously waited her time a little bit and now has become such a powerful voice in our community. So I was just trying to point counterpoint. No one would make fun of you, Brian. Your your excellence is is beyond beyond compare. Um, but but I do want to I, I, I do want to dive in a, a little bit more into sort of uh, like like the balance between all of these clubs and all of these social and all these attempts that you're making to get to know people and, 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 and be your best self and and follow some of these passions that may or may not be congruent with what you study and do your work like like, you know, Julia, it, does it take time to find that good club school balance? Uh, kid, do you know people that go one way or the other in terms of maybe over overextended? Um, did that ever happen to you? Um, does it take a little bit of a, of a time and a, and a balancing act to do those kind of things that mean a lot to you outside of the classroom and still stay focused and still stay with it inside the classroom? Yes, absolutely. Honestly, I think this is still a battle that I go through in my daily life of when I have all my work to do, but I would so much rather be giving a tour for SAP or doing a panel like this um, and put my work aside for a little while. But I feel like it's definitely a huge part of the college experience to find that balance and to realize that you will be going really strong in your academics sometimes, you'll be going really strong in your club sometimes, but as long as you manage your time well, there's no reason you can't get the most fulfilling experience from both. So I think for me, I had to realize, uh, especially freshman year, that you can't be in 10 clubs, or I guess maybe you can, but <laughs> I don't know if you'd be getting the full experience from those. I learned that I wanted to pick two or three clubs that I really, really enjoyed, devote a lot of my time to them, as well as having time for my academics too. So I definitely think that learning that time management is a big part of freshman year, and honestly, your entire college experience, um, finding the mix of the subjects that you love to study in school and the clubs that you really want to be a part of outside of that. No, very, very good point. Makes a lot of sense. 
And uh, because, you know, I, I, I wanna make sure that, what, you know, we don't get too far ahead of ourselves because there are gonna be some expectations with work. And, you know, some of the clubs and organizations that people fall into, uh, you know, correspond with what it is that they wanna study. You know, there are clubs in the Carroll School of Management. There are clubs that are political clubs. There are clubs that, you know, again, coincide with what people wanna do uh, with their work. Like Bree, you talked about, you know, the pre, the, the pre-med society, for example. And yeah, I mean, there are, group, the, there are organizations that do reflect academic sides, but some of the things that you're talking about, Julia, are sort of bigger picture things. Um, a lot of us are involved in service organizations, and that's a big part of what life is like at Boston College. Gianna, from your vantage point, and maybe from your early days, you, you know about some of the major service, service organizations at Boston College. Can you tell us a bit about some of the ones that stand out from what you've seen and, and the work they've done on campus? Sure, so something actually that really struck me my first year here, I, I um, went to a Catholic all girls school and service was a big part of that in my high school. So I definitely wanted to uh, seek out some service clubs here. And to my surprise, there was like a waiting list for about like 90% of them. People really wanna get involved in service, um, learning on campus and just being able to give back to their community. So some major ones I would definitely recommend uh, for Boston. I know a lot of people have been able to find amazing friends through that. and been able to fulfill, you know, their service learning experiences and just give back to the community around them. And I think that's amazing. Um, I myself am part of Alzheimer's Buddies chapter of BC. And I think that that's such an amazing experience. I am really passionate about, um, you know, giving back to Alzheimer's patients because I personally have a tie to that with my family. So it's really been fulfilling for me. And, um, you know, it's not a major service learning um, club on campus, but I definitely would recommend um, just seeking out what's mo what speaks out the most to you and what you're the most passionate about because I was able to find Alzheimer's Buddies and I think it's an amazing way to give back. I got involved this year and although um, you know COVID's made things hard, usually you would go visit them in their assisted living facility. Now we do it on Zoom, but I think it's the best time to get involved because that's when these patients really need someone to talk to and lean on. So um, yeah, I would definitely recommend seeking those out again. Like this the fair is an amazing way to seek out these clubs. I know we've said it like a million times, but I really, I really do think that that's the best way. But there are so many different ways to give back. There's also Pulse, uh, which you can get involved in your sophomore year, and it's a learning experience, um, you know, in the classroom, and also has a service component. I know that that's been an amazing experience for a lot of students, and it's, you know, they get to learn in the classroom. They also get to go out and s serve their community while learning about you know theology and philosophy so I think that that's an amazing experience too if you want if that speaks to you definitely seek that out your sophomore year so so a question in the in the Q&A Brian is um <clears throat> like is that where you met most of your friends so can you give me the percentage the exact percentage of friends that you've found from other sources and friends that you found from clubs and organizations that you've been a part of um, yeah, it's a hard for an exact percentage, but I would say directly from um, clubs, I'd probably say somewhere around like maybe 40 to 50 percent. But I think uh, something to keep in mind is a lot of my friends come from friends and friend groups kind of circling out. So uh, an example of that I can think of is I met a friend in a class. His name's Jason. He lives right there on that side of that wall. Um, and from that, we then joined an intramural volleyball team. And then from that intramural volleyball team, I had four or five new friends that I'm still very close with to this day. Um, so I guess you could say I met them through a club, but it's kind of in a roundabout way. Um, so there's certainly plenty of different methods to make friends on campus. I enjoyed sitting next to people in class and saying, hey, you want to get lunch after this class and getting to know them that way. If it's horrible and you hate them, you only get one 30 minute lunch with them. You can never see them again or you can hit it off and become friends. So um, certainly put yourself out there. But also at the same time, you can join clubs and find some like minded people. And maybe that's a more surefire way to find people you like. Um, I will say, I think that the title of this webinar is something along the lines of no grief life, no problem. Um, I think this is kind of one of those places where I think BC actually has an advantage because it has no Greek life and that you don't feel compelled to be stuck in one friend group with the, the first fraternity or sorority you applied into and rushed into. Um, instead of BC, you kind of have the ability to go between clubs and between arenas to find friends. And you end up with a diverse friend group with many different interests and many different fields of BC. And I know it's something I've grown to enjoy kind of getting to pick my friends and have more of a diverse friend group than if I was maybe stuck within my frat house or whatever it may be. I feel like I've, having the opportunity to be in many different circles is kind of an advantage and, and a better way to enjoy the college experience. 
Now this year has been a very interesting year. And by interesting, there's so many other words that I could put in place for that, uh, that would describe this year. Um, but as it pertains to our discussion today, uh, networking, being connected to classmates and other community members that you share passions with, that are your friends with, how has the pandemic affected clubs, organizations? Have organizations just become more creative? Have people had to change their expectations? Have some things gone on just as, nor as normal? Julia, um, how, how has this past year affected that aspect of your life? I definitely think when I first came back, I was expecting it to be very challenging and it certainly was. However, I feel like I still got to have a lot of the experiences throughout the year um, that I would have had in a more creative aspect. Um, so I still got to do tours and now we're doing a few in person, but we also did a lot of them via Zoom. Um, so I still got to engage with that aspect of campus that I really love. Um, and for Model UN, we still got to host a virtual conference with um, the high school students. And it was actually so much fun because normally they would be writing us notes, um, but they were actually able to type their messages to us. Um, so we were able to really engage with them um, and give quick quick responses. So in that way, it actually made the conference even more fun for me. But that being said, I obviously do look forward to hopefully being able to do everything in person again sometime in the near future. Um, in some clubs, we have had some outdoor socially distance events. Um, we've had a few pizza parties out on the quad, um, but I really am looking forward to hopefully getting back to being in person um, and making interactions in those ways. But I definitely think the clubs have done a great job of being creative and finding ways to connect even during this year. Um I mean, we're even if we talk about all the clubs that we are a part of, there's still so much that we haven't, we won't be able to touch on. So I'm going to ask both Bree and Gianna, tell us your favorite BC club or organization or activity that you're not a part of, but you're just a really big fan of because of the vibe, because of their traditions, because of who you know that's in them. So, so Bree, who, what's your favorite club that you're not a part of, uh, that you're a big fan of, and, and tell us why. Campus Activities Board is the first one that comes to mind. Uh, we call it CAB. We have so many acronyms here at BC. So if you come, you'll have to learn all of them. But CAB is really instrumental in providing a lot of opportunities for students to just let loose for an evening. There are lots of different events. Um, they put on our concerts that we haven't been able to have this year, but we'll hopefully resume them next year. Um, coming up, we have this tradition called mud stock where they get a literal slab of mud and put it in one of our parking lots. And then there's a volleyball tournament. Um, so that's a really fun, fun tradition um, that Campus Activities Board gets involved with or hosts. They um, are also super, close knit as a club. A lot of my friends that are in it have found very, very close friends of theirs. Like some of them are dating each other. Some of them are just best friends. Um, they get very, very close because they spend a lot of time organizing and hosting these events. Gianna, the same question. Yeah, um, I, so my roommate has been a part of the Heights, which is um, our independent newspaper on campus. And I've seen the work that she's put in firsthand. She's now managing editor of the paper and she moved up as a freshman and she, her dedication never ceases to amaze me. And I see, um, you know, I have some other friends that are part of the newspaper too, and they do amazing work. They have production on Sundays, they put together the paper and she's gained firsthand experience into the world of journalism. And it actually changed her career path. As I know, it's changed a lot of people's career path too. Um, and a lot of clubs tend to do that at BC because they're so um, all inclusive and it, they're so you know hands on with things. And I think that's another benefit as to what Brian was saying um, about not having Greek life. Our clubs are just all in and I love that about BC. So I would definitely recommend um, newspaper if journalism interests you I they have such an amazing community their vibe is great 
Um, they are, are really just the best of friends and they happen to work together on the newspaper. So I think that that's a great, um, a great thing to pursue if, you, if that interests you. Julia, right outside uh, my office door, they are setting up for Arts Fest, which is a reminder of some of the very talented actors and actresses and dancers and musicians and singers on our campus. A lot of them are clubs and organizations. Uh, you probably know people that are in these, you probably attend their events. Can you talk a little bit about some of your favorites when it comes to performing arts clubs and organizations? And are these things that, do, do you attend their events when you can? Are you a big fan of any particular ones? Tell us a little bit about that side of life at BC. Yes, I am personally a big fan. Um, one of my favorite groups is one of our dance groups. It's called Fuego. Um, and they won our last showdown, which is a dance competition that we have at the end of each year in the spring. We were not able to do it last year or this year, but hopefully in the future it will happen again. Um, but they do a big performance number and compete against the other dance groups and they won last time. Um, so I'm a big fan of them. One of my close friends is a member of the group. So I always try to go to their shows and support. Another group that I've recently become a big fan of um, is we have a music guild here at Boston College. And through that, that music guild, a lot of big Bands have formed here on campus. Um, so I know on Friday they're doing a battle of the bands um, in the Arts Fest, which I think will be really fun um, and just a great event for students to, first of all, show their talent, um, but also to get to see who's in a band. Like I think it's so cool that students on our campus are forming bands um, and expressing their creativity in that way. So I'm very excited for that one. Good point. Uh, in your introduction, Brian, you um, regaled us with your intramural prowess. Um, so maybe you're a good person, although I'm sure all of you have had your intramural successes. Uh, Brian's the only one that talked about it. So Brian, if you could talk a little bit about how are intramurals organized and how big a part of that is the club of the club and social uh, culture on campus. So you have no idea how much I was waiting for this question. I cannot <laughs> wait to elaborate on it. I will say before I go directly into intramurals, sports in general are a big part of BC's campus and kind of how we spend our time here supporting varsity sports. We have 31 division one varsity teams and we love supporting the student athletes. So you'll certainly see students spending their time doing that. There's also club sports. There's a number of different teams um, kind of varying in competitiveness, but I know a bunch of them are super competitive traveling all across the Northeast and in some places the country practicing very regularly and it's a way to stay competitive after high school. And then there's my favorite, the intramurals. Actually, I just found out a couple of weeks ago that there's a little stat page in the intramurals and I'm fourth on most teams played this year. So no better person to talk about intramurals, but I played everything from dodgeball to ultimate frisbee to kickball to um, foot tennis, volleyball, volleyball, all sorts of different things. But we have every single sport you can pretty much imagine play it at an intramural level. And then within the intramurals, there's varying degrees of competitiveness. There are co-rec leagues, there are open leagues, there are all women's leagues. Um, so it's a great way to just kind of grab some of your friends, get involved. You know, maybe, maybe some of you guys played basketball in high school and you want to keep playing, but just for fun and not super competitive. Maybe you want to get competitive and play some competitive soccer with your friends. That's something I've gotten to do. Um, but it's, it's a great way to continue playing sports without maybe the, the highly competitive pressure of a club or a varsity team, um, but also kind of staying fit, staying active, staying competitive, kind of grabbing some friends and having a good time. I certainly can't recommend it highly enough. It's a great way to meet more people on campus, to have a good time and to spend 45 minutes on a random Tuesday night after a whole lot of homework and classes, throwing dodgeballs at other people. I, there's really no better way to spend a night. Uh, Bree, can you, can you remind all of our viewers, because all of our viewers, if they get accepted to BC, they get accepted to other great schools, they're wicked smart and they're very involved and they're leaders among their community. And then I would suspect a few of them are worried that they're gonna come back here. They're gonna to come to Boston College and we love having them and they belong with us. But you know, they can't walk around saying, you know, it was a pretty big deal back at Foxborough High School. Um, you know, like you have to start all over. And I bet you that's frustrating because just a few months before you guys all rocked your high schools, had captain of two sports and you were the leader of, of this group and that group. And then you got to start all over. Can you reassure people, Bree, that that's going to be okay? And that by the time you get to junior year, you would have had, 
you kind of regain that confidence, made those friends, know the places that you really want to spend the most time in, know your juniors and seniors. Like, can you be reassuring? Because I would imagine that for a lot of people, maybe even like yourself, Bree, although I didn't check your resume from high school before we started, but, but you might've been in that same boat. And can you reassure people that it's going to be okay? Yeah. I mean, the transition anywhere is going to be a bit jarring going from your senior year back to being a freshman. I know you guys all remember what it was like to be a high school freshman, and then you're going to have to do that in a college atmosphere with a little people, a little more clubs, a little, a little more free time. Um, but I assure you, at BC at least, you will find your spaces. You'll get out of your BC career what you put into it. If you want to be involved, you can be super involved. There are so many different clubs and spaces for you to do that. You can find so many different people that can help support you along the way, whether it's friends, mentors, advisees. Um, there's not going to be a shortage of opportunities to do this. However, if you don't want to be involved, that's your choice. You don't have to do that. It's not a pressure, but most people at BC do find some way to dip their feet into intramurals or, you know, find those two to three clubs, like Julia was saying, to really find your people here, like your little family. Um, you'll find it. I know all of us here, even though Chris wants to say we don't have friends, we all have found it. Um, we have all found our little homes um, that make BC so special. As cheesy as it is, I feel like we all have that. No, cheese it up, Bree. Cheese it up. That's I will. Great. That's really <laughs> good. Uh, Gianna, you may have referenced it, and I think everyone's kind of alluded to it, but I do want to go back to the fact that you know joining these clubs and organizations sort of puts you in the in the camber range of juniors and seniors when you're a freshman. And, you know, that could be scary because, you know, they're older and they know what's going on and you barely do as a first year student. But I would think there's a lot of mentoring and advising and a lot of care that happens between upperclassmen and younger students in these organizations. And now all of you are getting to the, that age where you're going to be the ones that are mentoring instead of being mentored. So um, can you reassure people again that when you join these clubs, you know, these scary juniors and seniors aren't scary at all. And these clubs are great ways that there, there can be a lot of informal mentoring and, and help for students that are just joining us. For sure. I can definitely attest um, to, you know, knowing a lot of juniors and seniors also as you know, I'm one as well. I can personally attest I'm here for any freshman, um, any student at all, you know, that that needs help and needs some guidance um, along the way. I am very aware about, you know, how scary it can be as I was once a freshman that, you know, was lost. I didn't really know where I would fit in. I wasn't involved in UGBC my freshman year, partly because of that, you know, intimidation factor, you know, it could be overwhelming. You don't know if you like something. Um, so I def I'm de definitely here for any um, advice, but I would also say a lot of these clubs have formal um, mentorship aspects as well. So by formal, I mean just established um, mentorship programs. So for example, UGBC has a mentorship program that they started to launch this year um, in place of another one, and it's called Wings, and they partner you with an upperclassman in UGBC. Um, and that really allows freshmen to, to get that sense of you know, where they fit in and what they like, what they're involved in. Um, I know the newspaper also has a, a freshman mentor aspect as well. I know a lot of other clubs do, and that's really meant to integrate freshmen with upperclassmen. Um, you know, SAP, I know they had families um, that puts together, you know, freshmen with um, upperclassmen and just, you know, multiple upperclassmen and lets you, you know, get upperclassmen friends too. Um, you know, we, we don't, we don't, say, you know, we can't sit with you because you're a freshman. If anything, we really want to welcome you with some open arms and, you know, take you through the ups and downs because I know there's a lot of things I would want to tell my freshman yourself and I wish I knew as a freshman coming in. And I definitely want, you know, to relay that to any any struggling student, as many as I can, um, just because I wish I would have uh, known some of those things before coming in. Great answer, Gianna, thanks. So, so all this leads to sort of forming your social circle and many social circles. And then someone asked in the Q&A, like, what does this mean for the weekend? So Julia, like, take us through a weekend. 
you're part of the model, the, the, the model UN group, you have friends from SAP, you have friends from your communication classes, you have friends from the residence hall you lived in. Maybe you've had other friends, I don't know. Uh, but <laughs> like there's all of these people and then like it's the weekend. So is it like, let's go into Boston, uh, let's play Uno, let's get <laughs> trade solo cups out and let's party. Like, what is it? Like, what are we doing on the weekends, Julia? Now that we've formed all these circles of friends, from clubs, organizations, intramurals, what have you? I think, honestly, it's a combination of many different things. Um, so one of, honestly, my favorite things is going into Boston on the weekends because the food is so good <laughs> in Boston. Um, so I love just getting together with the group of friends. We take the tea, which is our subway system here, into the city and go out to dinner somewhere in the North End, which is where our Italian food is, or in the Seaport District, which is right on the water. Um, and it's just so much fun. Um, another thing that's actually brand new at BC but I'm, I'm just, I think it will continue it's been very su successful but we have something now called BC after dark um, which is like a little I guess hangout on campus for students which right now is um, very COVID safe it's outside um, but you can go you can order food you can just hang out with your friends you see a bunch of people there I saw people there who I haven't seen since my freshman year so it was so much fun to get to go and hang out with them on the weekends if you're over 21 you can get a wristband and you are able to order alcohol. So it's a really, really fun place actually to go on the weekends and the food's very good. I was impressed by how good it was. But overall, I would say a lot of times in terms of your clubs, you're going to be seeing clubs host social events on the weekends. So you might go into the city with a few friends that you met in your dorm or from your club, and then maybe you'll come back and go to a social event that's being held by a club to encourage even more bonding um, from the members of the club that you spend your meetings with during the week. Chris, you're muted. Rookie mistake. Well, let me ask you the same question, Bree. Like we, we, all these circles, like there might be some crossover in some circles, there might be different, like do your friends kind of evolve as your four years go? Do they change? Do they do like what Brian does, sort of friends, introduce you to other friends. And now you've got this big network, some of which you see a lot, some of which you haven't seen since freshman year. Like how, what's the evolution of the social network over your time at BC? I think your initial, people that you really get close with are your hallmates um, from freshman year, your resident assistant, um, there's one on each hall, really is helpful in providing those spaces. They have sometimes events with free food. Um, I think for, for upper kids, since we do have our two freshman campuses, Upper and Newton, um, upper kids had hoots hang out on Tuesdays and then Newton kids had howls. So hang out Wednesday late um, and you get to learn who's living next to you, who's living across from you and really meet them. Um, but from that, then you can go to your classes and meet all people there. And then these clubs provide different ways for you to expand that and strengthen friendships from maybe your hall that you didn't realize you were in the same club with and you can go to those information, informational meetings together or like grab ice cream afterwards and continue those conversations. Um, just right now, my roommates, one of them um, was friends with one of my, my orientation roommates so they, she introduced us and then we became really close. And it's things like that where you just, you never know where you're gonna find someone, but everyone is just introducing to everyone else and you can find your little group eventually. So Brian, is, is BC a tough place to crack socially? When you come here, like is, is there a code you need to crack or is it just put yourself out there, be yourself, say yes to things, do what you did in high school and you'll be ju just fine. 
Yeah, I wouldn't say it's a tough place to crack by any means, um, but I do think what Bree was saying is very helpful there. There's a, they have good programs in place to make sure you have a strong kind of support system of your hallmates. You get to know people very quickly. There's also something called Weeks of Welcome, which is a number of different events um, that they put on for first year students in their first week or two on campus, which is very helpful. But once you're there, um, I think my biggest piece of advice would just be to be yourself. Um, coming from high school, I personally went to a pretty small public high school, but kind of regardless of what your high school size was, it's going to be smaller than D.C. So there's going to be thousands of students for you to meet and you're going to eventually gel with a certain number of people. So even if that takes a couple of weeks, a couple of months, maybe in a full semester, um, it's not like you're going to go your entire D.C. career without finding some sort of kindred spirit or someone to get along with. So don't feel pressure to change who you are to kind of, I don't know, become part of the crowd and just try to fit in however you know, by any means necessary, stick to who you are, do what you want to do, be the person you want to be, and you'll find people like you on campus and people to be friends with. And certainly it can be difficult when you're moving to a brand new place and trying to meet all sorts of new people, um, but it's definitely worth kind of the wait. And, and there is a point in time where you will find kind of your comfort zone on campus and the people you gel with, and it's not a hard place to crack and you will find those people in time. And to bring it back to the title, which I came up with, thank you, uh, Gianna, if you're from Florida, then you have friends that went to U of F and FSU and other state schools that the Greek system is huge. It's the whole thing. It's like the Greek system, oh, in classes. So like your first week at BC, you're seeing on Instagram, all your friends rushing. And here you are like joining service clubs and planning on going on a retreat, you know? Uh, and I know people don't put themselves on Instagram all sad and depressed sitting in their room by themselves. Like, I, I get that. But I'm sure it was tough when you saw the visuals out there at, you know, a U of F football game and you know what you're doing at BC and it's different. Help people understand. Like I work a lot with Midwestern students and we talk about the same thing. Like the friendships at our place you know, are, are deeper than red solo cups. And, and it does take time. Confirm that for me. And was it tough when you saw all your friends at those places posting pictures and knowing what they were going going through? Sure. So um, actually, funny story, me and my roommate actually know each other from high school. So we would talk about this all the time because we have the same people on Instagram. We're like, did you see she rushed like this past week? And it was just all flooded with um, our friends rushing um, for different sororities. So that was um, like you mentioned, I wouldn't say it was completely rough because we both made the decision to come to BC knowing that there was no Greek life and and hearing students talk about their experiences without Greek life and how that really um, added to their experiences in regard to club and extracurriculars. But like everything, you know, you don't you don't live that until you you come here. So it was a little rough just to know that other people were really doing that. And then when you go home and you share your experiences, you know, you don't know what that um, you know what that feels like. But I think that you know, we feel fulfilled in so many other ways. And like you said, like friendships aren't just red solo cups. And I think we really felt that right off the bat, the friends, now looking back, we look back at like our Snapchat memories from like September, October, we have the same friend group. And like, that means, that means a lot. And just knowing that these people have been through such, you know, the ups and downs of college and some of the most formative years of my life. And I met them, you know, on my hall or through clubs. And then the circle kind of all meshed like, um, you know, Brian was mentioning earlier, just friends introducing other friends. And um, I've actually talked to this about, I talked about this to some of my friends, we realized that a lot of our friendships are stronger than those that we had in high school, we talk about things we wouldn't talk about in high school, and we have like these deeper discussions. So I think that I can definitely attest that, you know, friendships go deeper than red solo cups. And even if you feel a little bit you know, misplaced or you have FOMO because you see your friends brushing, know that, you know, you, you're at a place where you can make these lifelong friendships and you can have these commonalities with your friends and you can pursue things that you're passionate about and know that the person next to you is passionate about the same thing. So I think that says a lot. That's probably a good place to stop because I'm not going to beat that uh, in terms of summing it up for us, Gianna, that was well done. And well done by all of you guys. You know, talking about your decisions socially and how you've made friends, that's a personal thing. So I appreciate the candor 
and the authenticity in which you spoke tonight. And I appreciate you putting your email addresses right in there in your camera box. Let the conversation continue. Um, these guys are great and great representatives at BC. And uh, just as all of us are trying to welcome you to our campus, these guys particularly are, are excited to welcome any of you that have questions. And if we can help make you feel better about college and make you feel better about the BC community, we're happy to do it. You can find my stuff on the website. Uh, I'm pretty easy to find. Uh, I'm the guy with the rocket chair. And you see me all the time on campus too. Um, so that's it. Uh, Panley did a great job. Uh, and I wanna thank all the people that participated in student admissions panels throughout the month. Um, May 1st is Saturday. Uh, so if you've got questions, take advantage of our panel's offer to keep the conversation going or get in touch with us at BC. A lot of these are on, are on the admit, admitted student portal. So you can see the library of videos that we've taken uh, all uh, month long. We're here to help you guys, whether it's BC or otherwise, we want you to find your place just like these four did. Uh, that's what's important here. So uh, signing off, thanks for uh, viewing tonight. Good luck with your decision. Hopefully we see a lot of you at Boston College in August. Take care, everyone. Good night, panel. You did a great job. And hopefully we see you all soon. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Have a great night.